Good day, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 29th day of September. And we have today and tomorrow, and then the first to be on Sunday, and we'll be going into October. <clears throat> and so today's topic is titled, Wanting to be Wanted. And so before we get started on all that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he too can be your Lord and Savior day if he's not already. And if he is, hope you're having a good relationship with the Lord and looking for Jesus. And Brother James had a good message last night titled um, The Rapture Lifestyle. And I encourage you to go listen to that. It's a really good message there on how to live for Christ and uh, live like we're going to be taken up today and, and uh, being obedient and all that stuff. So that'll be available to watch on the YouTube channel at James Knox Sermons YouTube channel or www.jameswknox.org and so check that out and so praise the Lord. Alright, so we're going to get started uh, with the scripture song and it is from Philippians 1, 9-11 and so uh, let's go ahead and look at the book of Philippians chapter 1 really quick before we get into the scripture song. I'd like to look at the scripture um, first so you can get some idea and context about what's going on here in Philippians chapter 1 and Philippians is a good book and of course the whole Bible is good so amen so let's go here to Philippians and chapter 1 and let's read this here so it says here in chapter 1 in verse 1 it says Paul and Timotheus the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus which are at Philippi with the bishops and deacons Grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy, amen, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Isn't that great? <laughs> He's going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ when he comes and gets us and takes us up. And it says here in verse 7, Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you, all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the day, uh, and, unto the glory, excuse me, unto the glory and praise of God. But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have, have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And may, excuse me, many of the brethren in the Lord, waxing confident by my bonds, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, and some also of good will, the one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds, but the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. What then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Uh, but if I live in the flesh... This is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose I wot not, for I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart, and to be with Christ, which is far better. 
Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. And having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all for your uh, furtherance and joy of faith, that your rejoicing may be more abundant in Jesus Christ for me by my coming to you again. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation, and that of God, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which ye saw in me, and now here to be uh, in me. Amen. So that was all Philippians chapter 1. So you know what uh, Paul was saying there. And now let's get into the scripture song here. And um, this is from chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. Again, so press play and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So here we go. Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And, and this, this I pray, that, that your love may abound, abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, judgment that ye may prove things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere without offense to the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Here we go. This I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve and are excellent that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God and I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve things that are excellent that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ being filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God unto the glory unto the glory unto the glory and praise of God this I pray and this I pray Amen all right, so put that back to yesterday's, and we'll do those scripture songs again towards the end of the broadcast. And now it's time to get into today's topic for Friday, September 29th, titled Wanting to be Wanted. And it says here in Luke 15, 6b, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. <clears throat> and that's Luke 15, uh, 6, and that's uh, one of those parables that Jesus was... Uh, uh, talking about, so let's go look at that that really quick in Luke uh, 15. Go to Luke 15 really quick and look at this. All right, so I believe that's I believe that's right there. So um, what was that? Six. All right, so this is when uh, uh, Jesus uh, was coming here. It says, "Then drew uh, near unto him all the publicans and sinners uh, for to hear him." So Jesus is there, and the uh, publicans and sinners are um, coming uh, to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lost one of them, doth not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it, on his shoulders rejoicing, 
And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. He says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety-nine just persons which need no, uh, no repentance. So that was the um, first one there. And then uh, he's got these other two parables about the woman with the pieces of silver and then the um, parable of the prodigal son. So I encourage you to read those on your own time. But that was the first one there. So today's author is E.B. That would be the initials for uh, Eric Bl Blankenship, Blankenship, pastor of Unity Baptist Church in Hickory, North Carolina. So let me read you what he wrote today on this topic of wanting to be wanted. All right, so he writes here, Many people go through life lonely and never experience the joy of companionship. Right? So whether you are uh, never get married or if you do get married, um, either way, you got to keep serving the Lord with or without a husband or wife. So again, many people go through life lonely and never experience the joy of companionship. Individuals have spent their whole lives waiting for the right moment or perfect opportunity. It is a case of wanting to be wanted. A man wants a wife, or perhaps a woman is praying for a husband. Thus, they spend their days looking, longing, and laboring until one day they discover true love. Hmm. Uh, isn't it wonderful to be wanted? Yeah, and uh, praise the Lord that uh, Jesus wants us. So whether we ever get married or not, and you stay single, uh, um, there's other people that want you and need you and all that stuff. Whether you, so not just uh, not just a husband or wife. So isn't it wonderful to be wanted? It sure is. A woman wants a child just as much as children need a mother. A preacher wants a church, and a congregation needs a pastor. What good is a classroom unless the teacher has students, right? So. The mountains are steep, the rivers wide, and the valleys low, but that does not stop the shepherd from rescuing his sheep. Praise the Lord. Uh, the distance, the danger, and the debris does not hinder him from pursuing what he wants. The cross was heavy, his blood was flowing, and the pain was real, but that did not stop the Savior from redeeming sinners. The stripes, the spikes, the spear could not prevent Christ from his goal. Amen. The skeptics doubted the wait had has been long, but the promise is sure. The son will return for his own. Amen. Looking for that blessed hope. Right? So, Jesus Christ, uh, no opinion, obstacle, or opposition will impede him. So what does Jesus want? Uh, so what does Jesus want? He wants to know you and you to know him. Yes, it is wonderful to be wanted. So, Jesus wants a relationship with you. And, of course, you uh, desire to have a relationship with him. or hope you do. So, and that's the most important relationship, is to have a good, solid relationship with the Lord, Jesus Christ. And as I always say, uh, Brother James said at one time, a long time ago, um, that uh, if you don't have a good relationship with Jesus, then all your other relationships will fail and not succeed. So, make sure that... You're having a good relationship with the Lord first, and then all the relationships will uh, stem off of that. So, amen. All right, good good topic there. And so we all want to be wanted by somebody. And so, amen. All right. I'll put that aside there, and I'll grab the Daily Strength Volume 1 book as we continue through this first week of, of the topic Obedience. <clears throat> and today is Friday, day 237. And this is titled, The Blessings of Obedience. So, you get blessed when you're obedient. Amen. Alright, so Deuteronomy 11:26 through 28 is the passage. And it says here, Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse if ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. Of course, this is um, the Lord speaking to the nation of Israel, but we can 
uh, use this and apply this to our lives as Christians to be obedient. All right, so introductory thoughts. It says the children of Israel had an important decision to make, whether to obey the Lord or unwisely refuse to obey him. <laughs> uh, the Lord assured his children that their obedience would pay off with fruitful dividends. He promised to bless their obedience and curse their disobedience. The Bible clearly lists the blessings of obedience, and that's Deuteronomy 28, 1-14. So let's go look at that really quick. Um, Deuteronomy 28, the uh, blessings here. So Deuteronomy, oops, went too far there. All right, so Deuteronomy, what was it? 28, 1 through 14. So let's look at this here really quick. <clears throat> All right, so 1 through 14, this is a... Um, the list of blessings of obedience, Deuteronomy 28, 1-14, and says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy, thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed, shall be, uh, thou, blessed shalt thou be uh, when thou comest in, and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Uh, they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that thou settest thine hand to do, or uh, thy, thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee in holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep thy, the commandments of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee, and the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall Open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven, to give the rain unto thy land in his season, and to bless all the work of thy hand, and thou shalt uh, lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow, and the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath, if that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. So that's the blessings God would have given Israel if they would have obeyed. So, amen. So, all right, so that was that. Now let's continue on in the uh, introductory thoughts. So that was the list of blessings of obedience, Deuteronomy 28, 1-14. And it says, Though the blessings of obedience can vary from one person to the next, obedience always yields God's blessing. For instance, Abraham was told that all nations would be blessed in his seed because he obeyed the voice of the Lord, Genesis 22, 18. Isaiah told the Israelites that if they would obey they would eat the good of the land, Isaiah 1.19. Jeremiah told his audience that their obedience would cause it to be well with their soul, and that their souls would live, Jeremiah 38.20. Blessings received from obedience may vary, but the blessings of obedience are well worth any temporary fleshly sacrifice. Right? So, amen. That's the introductory thoughts. And now devotional thoughts for children says obeying makes us feel good inside sometimes it brings rewards an ice cream cone a new toy staying up a little later at one night uh, etc 
Yet the best reward is knowing that what you've done is well pleasing to the Lord. Colossians 3.20. So let's look at that in Colossians 3, chapter 20. Really quick. Colossians 3.20. <clears throat> Alright, so Colossians 3 and verse 20 says. Uh, Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. So that is the devotional thoughts for children. And of course, you can apply that to adults too. And now for everyone, it says, What are some blessings that a child might receive uh, by obeying his parents? What are some blessings that a worker might receive by obeying his boss? What are some blessings that believers might receive by obeying the Lord? How do you feel when you have obeyed when no one is watching? Do you feel a sense of joy or feelings of remorse for doing right? Hopefully it's joy. The joy that we feel and the lack of guilt might be an element of the blessings of obedience. Amen. And that was the devotional thoughts. Now prayer thoughts. It says, ask God to help you see the blessings resulting from obedience. Then ask the Lord to help you Consider the negative consequences resulting from making a decision to disobey. And of course the hymn from the book is titled Trust and Obey. And that is a good hymn there. So, amen. Alright, so put that uh, to tomorrow's. And put that aside for right now. And now I'll grab the hymn book and we'll do these two hymns. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alright, so. Oops. Okay, so I'm not too familiar with this first hymn, but I'll play it and we'll listen to it first and see if it's easy to sing along with. So this is hymn 512 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book, another one of these, The Preservation of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song, and it's titled Preserve Me, O oh My God, written by John Stenson, 19th century, and William B. Bradbury, 1816 to 1868. So press play and we'll listen to it first and then try to sing along with it. If not, I'll just read you the stanzas here. So. Alright. Keep us, and of course we know he does, 
And so let me read you the story here at the bottom. It says, Pastor John Stenson uh, served the congregation of Carmel Chapel, London, in the preface to his The Baptist Hymnal Book, of uh, which more than a hundred selections are by his own hand. He provides the following admonition. So this is his admonition. Four things I entreat you continually seek to be faithful and prayerful and watchful and meek. Consider the words of Jesus our Lord until unto death be thou faithful and I will reward lest Satan the tempter should ever gain ground in praying and watching my brethren abound. Remember the meek are your father's delight while the proud he has said shall not stand in his sight. <laughs> That's pretty good. So that was uh, written by Pastor um, John Stenson, who uh, uh, lived uh, back in the 19th century. So, amen. I'm going to have to post that one up on the, uh, on the Facebook uh, page there. So, all right. So, let's uh, give you the stanzas here, or the references, I mean. So, stanza one, we have Second Thessalonians 3.3 3 and Romans 7.18-19. Stanza two is Ephesians 6.11 and James 4.7. And then stanza three is John sixteen thirty three, and uh, Psalm thirty four seventeen, and then stanza four is Psalm seventy one five, and Second Corinthians three five. So that is the end of the first hymn, and now we're going to jump back towards the back of the book and do the second hymn, Trust and Obey. So, <clears throat> all right. So here we go. I need to get the tune here a little bit. So. All right. So trust and obey. Trust and obey him instrumental. Let's see if we can find one that's All right. So we'll just go with that one. There's like five stanzas here, so I'm not sure if I'm going to do all of them with the instrumental. <clears throat> Alright, so this is Trust and Obey, and five stanzas here, so try to do all of them with the instrumental, or most of them. And then try to maybe do some acapella, or so let's see how it goes here. I'm just going to go ahead and do this all a cappella. I got this tune here. All right. When we walk with the Lord in the light. Oh, I forgot to give you the uh, introductory stuff. So, all right. Sorry about that. Let me uh, give you this. This is Trust and Obey. And this is hymn 769 in the hymn book. And this is uh, one of these, The Obedience of the Saint Hymns, a spiritual song written by John H. Samus. S-A-M-M-I-S, 1846-1919, and then Daniel B. Towner, 1850-1919. So, all right, let's go ahead and I'll sing this, and you can sing along if you like. All right. When we walk with the Lord in the light of His Word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. 
Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt nor a fear, not a sigh nor a tear, can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay. For the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do where he sends we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Amen. All right, so that was a good hymn. like that hymn there. So let's make sure uh, we're trusting and obeying the Lord, and uh, amen. All right, so let me read you the uh, story down here at the bottom. It says, these lines were written in an, un, uh, in an unusual fashion. The refrain was penned before the stanzas. Professor Towner, director of music at Moody Bible Institute, accompanied Moody to a meeting in Massachusetts. He later shared the account of his of one particular evening, a young man rose during a time of testimony stating, I am not sure, but I'm going to trust and I'm going to obey. Towner made note of the lad's words and shared the story with J. H. Semis. The echo of the refrain came, followed by rhymes and subsequent melody from Towner. The birth of a gospel song was complete. Amen. All right, so that is the end of the story there. And now let me give you the references. So stanza one, we have uh, Psalm 119, 130, John 14, 21. And then, uh, so that's stanza one. Stanza two is Psalm 89, 15, and 1 John 4, 18. Stanza three is Romans 8, 18, 2 Corinthians 1, 4, and 1 John 1, 7. Stanza four is Ephesians 5, 12. And Philippians 3.10. And then stanza 5 is 1 Corinthians 1, 9, 1, 9 and John 20.21. 20, and then we have for the refrain is Psalm 144, verse 15. So that is the end of the hymns. So put this back to this one here. And put that to tomorrow's. Alright, put that aside there. Now we'll do the scripture songs again. And then we'll wrap it up for today. So, good, good topics and stuff from the devotionals. So, here we go. Yesterday's... Gotta go back. Yep, okay. Yesterday was the First Thessalonians. So, here we go. 
1 Thessalonians 2, 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when we received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but then is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Thank we God, for this cause also thank we God, without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but that is in truth the word of God, which effectually worked also in you that believe. Thank we God, which also in you which believe. Thank we God. Amen. All right, now today's Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And, and this, this I pray, pray that, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may prove things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere without offense to the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Oh, here we go. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense. Till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense. Till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. Unto the glory. Unto the glory, unto the glory and praise of God. And this I pray, and this I pray. Praise the Lord. All right. So that's it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topics for the Baptist bread and daily strength and then the hymn for tomorrow. And tomorrow will be the last day of the month, and so i um, always uh, been doing lately on the last day of the month, doing uh, uh, where we go back and do scripture songs that are good ones. Of course, they're all good scripture songs, so try to pick the ones that are um, uh, good to sing again, and do that at the second part of the broadcast after we do the um, devotionals and stuff. So that will be tomorrow, and then um, give you all the, the stuff for uh, the 1st of October, and... Uh, new CD and everything, so that will be tomorrow's broadcast, a little extra longer there, uh, so, alright, so tomorrow is the 30th, and Second Peter 3.18 is the scripture song verse, and it says, but grow in grace, 
and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. So that's tomorrow's scripture song. And then tomorrow's topic for the last day of September for the 30th is titled, Has Right Become Wrong? And, and today uh, it sure has. So um, evil is uh, looked at as good and good looked at as evil. So uh, that's the topic for tomorrow, Has Right Become Wrong? And First John 4, 5 through 6 is the uh, passages there. So we'll find out more about this topic tomorrow from the Baptist Bread. And then the Daily Strength book. We're continuing uh, the first week of obedience. And we're wrapping up the first week of this topic of obedience. And then going into week 35 next week, obedience continued. So tomorrow is day 238, Saturday. And it's titled, The Curse of Disobedience. So today we had the blessing of obedience. Tomorrow we're going to go through the curse of disobedience. And that's from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, uh, verses 26 through 28 again. And so that will be that topic. And then the song for tomorrow is titled, Lord, If Thine Eyes Survey Our Faults. So that's tomorrow's hymn from the book. Not too familiar with that one. But uh, I'll look that up and sing that one, hopefully. And then the hymn, the first one for tomorrow is 513 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is another, the Preservation of the Saint uh, Hymns, a spiritual song. And this is titled, I Found a Friend. So that's tomorrow's uh, first hymn. And then there is a story for this one. So, amen. All right. So if you want to get a copy of that hymn book and the Daily Strength Volumes 1 through 4 books, they're available on Melody publications.com is where you can order those and then the scripture song book and cd should still be available to order on the internet at brother dean and sister patty runyon's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com and they are missionaries to port kaituma guyana so pray for them and uh all those over there that are uh, serving the lord and uh their walk with the lord and everything so Amen. And you too can be a bold witness in your own backyard by going and telling somebody about Jesus today and getting the gospel out. So, amen. All right. So that's the um, end of that. That's the that's the scripture song book. And now the Baptist bread here for this month and next month. And if you order now, you'll probably get the one for uh, October or no, November and December. So that's available on baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And so check that out, those websites. So, amen. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. And this is the first book we should always be reading and getting into and studying it and showing ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. So ask the Lord to help you to understand uh, what you're reading there and who it's uh, um, written to and how we can apply it uh, to ourselves. And it says that um, the Bible is... Um, not all written to us, but it's all written for us. So, so amen. All right. And if you know somebody who doesn't have Facebook, you can direct them to the YouTube channel by going to Ambassador for uh, for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast and look me up that way. And uh, so there's that. And then the podcast uh, where I've been reading different heroes of the Christian faith and uh, missionary stories and going through Brother James's book on the tire tracks right now. So check that out at God's Messenger Lighthouse Podcast. And that's on Spotify or iHeartRadio right now, so you can check it out on those two platforms. So praise the Lord. All right, that's it for today, so thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until next time. Bye-bye now.